Hello everyone. So today let us talk about uh, how to become a Jira admin that is being loved by everyone or I should say how not to become a hated Jira administrator. Now today I actually made uh, these notes because uh, sometimes uh, uh, I get this feedback that you make videos wherever you want to and uh, uh, you of course you know talk about anything which is in fact true i can talk about uh, my experiences wherever i want but today i thought okay let me just you know make some notes and uh, try to also formalize uh, uh, what i'm going to talk about today so usually not always but usually jira administrators they fall into this category of uh, system admins and system admins they are uh, not always i mean not always uh, liked because they are usually a bit geeky they are usually uh, uh, like sitting somewhere in the corner with their multiple screens trying to monitor the log files and that is the image which is uh, to be honest not really true i mean not always true and I'm of course no, not really trying to generalize but that is the image when it comes to the word admin and when you say Jira admin people usually think about uh, system admins which in a way uh, uh, it was definitely uh, relevant or true maybe in data center because usually Jira admins are uh, the ones who take care of the server they also take care of uh, making sure that Jira is up and running they monitor the performance but that is the image and we, can't, we, we cannot really deny it and also at the same time when we talk about Jira admins Jira admins are often accused of uh, not very close to delivery because when the users are using the tool for uh, let us say Jira service management or maybe for a specific use case or maybe Jira software development they are trying to use the tool to deliver it could be the next upcoming release it could be resolving uh, a bug or uh, maybe an incident and uh, they think the way jira is uh, configured is not really uh, 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 proper because uh, they have a specific way of working and at the same time uh, they also think that because jira administrators they don't have to update the issues they of course have configured the tool they have of course uh, provided this tool for users to use but uh, Jira admins don't really do any actual uh, delivery they don't really do any updates to the issues they don't really create they, they don't really have to create the epics they don't really have to create the backlog they don't have to create uh, uh, those uh, stories under those epics so which is in a way true and that is what I'm trying to uh, to talk about and uh, help you with, especially if you're a Jira admin who is not being uh, liked by, or you if you think you're not being liked by other people in your organization. Now talking about the solution, uh, and of course you may not like it, but uh, I have been doing it for many years. I think it has been 15-ish uh, years I'm doing this Jira Atlassian uh, consolidation. So, to change your image, uh, the first thing that you can do, and by the way, this video is basically for those people who are, of course, Jira administrators, but uh, the theme or the category of this video is uh, career, like career advice. So, if you are uh, a Jira admin, I'm sure you can uh, relate to it. So, the first the, the first thing that you can do and it is actually a very obvious solution is basically to change the image i mean that is the best thing that you can do try to change the image and i, I will of course elaborate on this now uh, what you can do if you are let us say responsible for maybe jira or similar applications in your organization you are under this uh, admin uh, team domain whatever you want to call it so be, approach, be approachable and uh, be uh, appro approachable 
in a way so that uh, people can reach out to you not just to raise tickets but also uh, open up other uh, mode of communications and i can of course give you some ideas so if you are someone who is working in a team who is responsible for uh, maintaining the application don't just focus on maintaining the application your responsibility is not just to make sure jira is up and running your responsibility is also to be on the consultation side you your responsibility is also to make sure that uh, you know how people are going to use the tool so what you can do is uh, you can uh, maybe organize some uh, monthly or bi-monthly or uh, every other uh, week some kind of regular uh, webinars internal webinars of course in, within your organization or maybe some kind of regular like sessions it is it is not really a training but it is more about okay you can actually uh, say that okay in this particular session we are going to talk about uh, uh, how jira is configured right now and uh, upcoming uh, improvements maybe you can talk about uh, that right now we are running on jira version 9 point something and we are going to upgrade it and of course it is an opportunity to uh, to, to, to basically promote your team and whatever you're doing and, and also in a way it is good if you're working in a, in a corporate environment because uh, you want to make sure that you're always shining not just yourself but your team so you can probably you know do these regular uh, webinars or sessions and uh, maybe internally within your organization you can uh, think about uh, uh, maybe asking your communication team or whatever uh, team who is responsible for uh, organizing those regular uh, you know monthly town halls for example maybe ask them can you please uh, you know just share the updates that we are going to do in uh, jira or similar or similar tools the next thing that you can do is uh, uh, seek opportunities to talk to your end users directly so of course apart from doing this uh, let us say webinars you should make it a point to talk to your end users or internal end users and uh, it could be a formal thing i mean you can of course you know reach out to them can i please talk to you but if you are responsible for uh, maintaining an application like jira then they will anyways reach out to you they will of course reach out to you for support request and you can just you know uh ask them i have received your ticket i understand what you're doing but i need a bit more information it would be quick it would be better if we can have like a half an hour catch up or maybe if we can talk to each other so if you talk to them then uh, uh it will always help uh, not just your team but also them to realize that you are you, you are after all uh, of course human beings and if you have configured a tool in such a way that you want to implement uh, or you want to bring some standardization and if you talk to them about about these things if you challenge them but of course nicely then they will uh, understand i think there is no replacement of talking to people and uh, i mean doing it online on teams or google meet or zoom is fine but you should try to talk to them as much as you can and uh, also uh, th this is important again it is on the similar lines talking to your customers talking to your end users try to understand what they are doing so if you are talking to let us say a tester if you are talking to a test manager if you are talking to a release manager if you are talking to product manager if you are talking to a developer just try to understand what they are doing and usually uh, i'm just sharing my experience usually if, if you ask people nicely and if you uh, if you ask them can you please uh, maybe don't just focus on the configuration of the tool don't just focus on okay we have a backlog we have a story we have this workflow just ask them what kind of work do you do for example if you're talking to a test manager and you're trying to maybe roll out or if you're trying to configure x-ray or self or whatever test management strategy that you are following using these apps just ask them 
okay so you're trying to write test cases how do you write your test cases if you're trying to if you're asking if you are the same question to a developer just ask them what kind of work do you do uh, do you spend most of your time in uh, visual studio code uh, what kind of uh, language are you using just try to get a bit more personal uh, with them you don't have to be an expert on an, on on these things on on what they are doing on a day to day basis but just ask them and they will be more than happy to share and i can guarantee that you know people usually want to talk about what what they do and maybe ask them nicely uh, about their struggles about their challenges or try to uh, ask them uh, about uh, uh, about their team about uh, their managers if you ask these questions they will uh, uh, appreciate that you're trying to genuinely help them and uh, whenever someone is trying to challenge that jira is not configured the way they want to work don't just bluntly reject the idea try to appreciate uh, first of all if, if someone is let us say complaining uh, about uh, some specific uh, behavior of the tool you can of course you know reject their uh, uh, complaint or you can just say okay we we, we will not really implement this just uh, ask them to provide you more context and when you ask them to provide more context of course you know they will share that at the same time uh, uh, you should tell them that we appreciate that you are sh you're sharing these details and uh, uh, what we can do uh, we do have like a long term plan to help you to support you but in the meantime for a, for for something to to fix in short term to help you we can probably do these small changes and uh, i think when you talk to your customers when you talk to your internal users i think that is of course a win but at the same time if you uh, make little small improvements or if you do like a small change to support them they will appreciate and that is how you know human beings work if you talk to them especially in corporates where you have like a big team where people are always work, working in silos in their own team and they don't really have any cross functional uh, uh regular catch up uh, which i think is very important and uh, what i can also suggest is ask them nicely and i can i can tell you from my experience people will never really say no to this just ask them can i just uh, shadow you for maybe uh for 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 a small thing for example if you are working with a scrum master and they are struggling with jira or they are struggling with a specific thing that they want to achieve uh you can you you can ask them okay let me do one thing i understand what you're trying to do i understand you want to make these three fields mandatory but let me do one thing uh, can i join your stand up call tomorrow and try to understand what they are doing what uh what their team is doing uh, in their stand up call you will of course gain a lot, lot of uh things by just listening to what what they have been doing what they usually do in their uh, stand up calls and uh, you will of course uh, know a lot of people so just try to shadow it could be a stand up call it could be their uh, monthly or weekly catch up it could be their retrospective whatever it is because jira is always used jira is always a, a tool which is uh, like used by everyone it could be jira it could be confluence but if you join those uh, calls they will think that okay in our call we now have an expert who is trying to help us and uh, of course you are an expert in what you do but because you are an admin uh, you are not really close to delivery you are actually trying to fill that gap you are actually trying to fill uh, that gap of uh, those uh, missing skills uh, that you would never really acquire unless you actually do the delivery but in a way if you shadow them in a way if you uh, attend their calls or maybe if you ask them nicely can you please involve me in know whatever 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 activity that you are doing then you will also gain personally i think you also have to think about your career uh, as a jira admin and uh, the last thing that i would say and it is actually very important and by the way all these points and especially this last point is not really just about jira it is applicable in uh, in any organization big or small it is also applicable uh, 
uh, in corporates or uh, small companies try to build uh, relationships i'm not really saying that you should uh, you know become their friends but seek opportunities where you can uh, just uh, uh, ask them okay i'm in i'm in the office or maybe i'm on this zoom call can you please uh, uh, attend for like 5 minutes let us have a quick chat if you if you can do it face to face nothing like it and that is why i think i think there has to be a balance when it comes to working from home i prefer working from home i prefer you know being in my room i love that but at the same time i also know that when you talk to people in real life when you just uh, have a 5 minute chat with them maybe you know ask them to have a quick coffee or tea uh, or maybe if you ask them let us have a quick drink after work i think uh, these things really help you uh, in your career because you will of course build uh, relationships you will also network with other people and if you, especially if you are working in big organizations and even if even if you are not working in big organizations if even if you network with people people will always you, usually people are always moving right if you are just starting your career uh, in the next 10 years you will find people who will uh, join different companies and uh, you will definitely benefit a lot if you have uh, this nice working relationship with your colleagues and i think that is very important so in this video i just wanted to share my my experience my ideas and uh, i'm of course trying to help uh, jira administrators like like you uh if you are just uh, updating workflows and creating uh, work, creating post functions conditions and uh, creating issue types then you are definitely uh, missing missing out something i'm i'm sure you can do it for as long as you want and you should be proud of it but at the same time uh, whenever you, you are uh, entering this jira administ creation uh, domain this field you should always uh, think about uh, being a consultant because if you're a consultant you will gain more respect uh, number 1 number 2 you will also have a lot of opportunities and your skill set should not be limited to jira i mean of course make jira your primary skill set it should be your main competency but also think about uh, uh, learning something new uh apart from jira uh and think about uh, tools outside atlassian ecosystem make jira your main competency if you are a jira admin uh, but of course try to focus on your communication skills try to focus on your uh, uh networking skills and of course uh learn other skills if you can and i think you should so that is all that is all i wanted to talk about in this uh, in this video i hope I hope I've I've given you some ideas and uh, I also hope that you learned something new today. Thank you very much. Bye bye.